Thank you very much, Nigel, for that very nice invitation. As you say, I did retire down here to Sidmouth um, about five, five years ago now, actually. Um, and as you say, I, I, I was asked to become a member of the Keith Owen Grant Committee in, in 2017 and actually became chair of the committee in January 2020. And um, after one meeting, of course, we went straight into uh, COVID times. So that made it an interesting year, should we say. Um, what I'd like to do um, in this talk is to, is to talk a little bit about the Keith Owen Fund, to look back over the 13 years and see what the uh, fund has been able to do and achieve, and then look a little bit in terms of looking towards the future as well. Um, I think in terms of, of this talk, if you have any questions, um, the normal way that the SBA operate that in these talks, I understand, is to use the chat function, which you should be able to find um, on the bottom line of your Zoom screen. And if you open the chat, you can type a question in. Um, if you can direct the question just to John Dow by selecting John Dow as the recipient, then John will be able to moderate the questions as they as as and as they come through during the during the remainder of the talk. That would be great, thank you. So, um, to the key tone. Um, I think we prob probably most of us know the, the little bit about the history of Keith Owen. Um, I mean, he, he was, uh, he grew up in South Devon. He worked in the RAF, moved to Canada where, where he was an investment banker. His mother lived in Sidmouth and he loved the place and he visited Sidmouth very often. Um, it was when he was back in Sidmouth that he actually discovered that he had cancer. And um, the prognosis was that he, he didn't have very long. It was quite an aggressive form of cancer. Um, he asked the trustees of the SBA if he would, if he could, if they would accept a substantial bequest from him. Um, and he told me he wanted to leave his money to the SBA because, basically, he loved Sidmouth and he admired the work the SBA did um, to protect and look, at, look after Sidmouth and, 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 in the main, from a volunteer base. Um, I think it was some surprise um, to the SBA when um, the extent of that bequest became clear, and in the, in the end, when all of the when all of the um, investigations were carried out, it ended up with two point three million pounds that was bequested um, in trust to the SBA. Um, that was put on the basis it would be used, it would be invested. Uh, the capital would remain intact and it would actually be used to generate an annual income return. Um, over, the, over the 13 years that the fund has been operating under that, in that mechanism, um, over a million pounds has been awarded in grants uh, across the 13 years. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the profile of those awards in the slides that follow. Um, the capital value of the fund, of course, was was not touched in that. That was a, that was the form of the uh, the bequest, and the fund capital value uh, stands at around three point four million pounds today. Um, so that's the and that is continues to generate a you know a handsome annual um, investment return. I'm not really going to talk any more about the life of Keith Owen. Um, um, but I would note on this slide that there is a, a, a nice book that was written by the Reverend Handel Bennett and Christine Hardy, which actually looks back over the life of Keith Owen in some detail. It's quite interesting to read. There are copies still available from the museum bookshop. Um, the other thing I'd just like to mention on these slides, um, I've kind of tried, tried to mix them a little bit with a bit of content and then a picture. So on most of the slides, as we go through them, you'll see some of the areas that the Keith Owen Fund was able to make awards to during the last 13 years. Um, and that's the little pictures you'll see on each of the slides. And so most of those will have a script as to what the award is. So how do we run the, um, the, the, the Keith Owen Fund? Um, what one of the things that Keith did say was that he wished that the Keith Owen Trust Fund be set up as simply and as flexibly as possible. Um, and, and the way it runs today is actually the way it was set up 13 years ago. It's administered by the offices of the SBA, 
And there are two committees that, um, uh, that manage the fund, one of which is the investment subcommittee. And that, that subcommittee looks after the capital investment of the fund and the, that, that aspect of it. And then the grants subcommittee, which actually deals with applications for, for awards and considers those and makes awards where appropriate. Those two committees, um, they when I say they are, they are, they tend they operate at arm le arm's length in that I, you know I am the chair of the grant subcommittee, but I'm I'm not involved with the investment side of things. So basically, it's a it's a pass over if you like. The investment subcommittee, you know, does the work to generate the 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 income on a yearly basis, and the grant subcommittee considers applications to make against that income that's being generated. Um, We've tried to make the application process as simple as possible. I think it's a two-page form. Um, we also we also aim aim to give people who make applications to the form a response in terms of a, a, a yes or no within one grant committee meeting. So we don't so we don't um, hold things out if you like over multiple grants committees. The grant committee, by the way, meets every two months, um, so it meets six times during the year. Um, 10 people on the grants committee, um, four of those are trustees of the SVA, uh, and, and, and that includes um, um, Ed, Ed as the chair of the SVA, um, and uh, Gary Turner, who's the treasurer of the SVA. Um, each of the applications that come, that come in, we, we, we assign a grant committee member and link them to that application um, to help the to help the applicant in actually putting their applications together and make sure they're getting all of the necessary information that we need. Um, and um, then if that, that application is successful, that grant committee member stays with it and keeps in contact with the, um, with the, with the award, with the, with the organization who received the award through, through, through to completion of the, of the project. And then after completion of the project works, works along with the uh, organization for any publicity that we're going to do, either within the SBA magazine, in the paper, or, or, or as you'll see later, by putting things like Keith Owen fund plaques in appropriate places. If you have the SBA magazine that's just recently come out, you'll see there's three or four um, um, Keith Owen fund projects that were featured. Um, within that magazine, one of which was the Viking Football Club, one of which was, I think, Sydney Things in, in Bloom, and I think the other one from memory was the um, award that we made to the Sailing Club. So we, so we work with the, with the organisations to actually um, um, do any publicity um, on a mutual basis upon completion of the project. So I look back, over over the 13 years and first question was so how many how many awards have been made over the 13 years and the answer is 218 awards were made over over the 13 years that the fund has been in existence um, you can see it started in 2008 and you can see a ramp up as it as as the fund got working in the years 2009 and then in the period of 2010 to 2014 roughly speaking that Averages somewhere in the order of around just over 20 awards per year. Um, and then when you look through the years from 2015 to 2019, that award level reduces somewhat, and the average was about 15 awards a year. And then in the final two years, 20 and 21, that, that's what you would probably call COVID time, because there you can see the award, the award levels decrease significantly. We had to close the fund at the beginning of 2020, um, when the COVID pandemic um, restrictions took place. So the seven projects that were completed in 2020 were those that were in progress and could be completed even in a, in a COVID lockdown situation. We reopened the fund in 2021, uh, at the beginning of 2021, and so far this year, we've had six projects that we've approved. In addition to that, there's also a number of um, SBA run projects that are being supported. Um, the Valley of a Million Bulbs would be one example. Um, some support to SBA land and woodland maintenance, um, some projects for the museum. So there's some additional activities 
which were SDA run that have taken place in, a, in addition to those 218 awards to non-SVA organisations. Picture at the bottom um, is the picture of the, um, in 2008, when a, a, a significant award was made for the rethatch of the cricket pavilion on the, uh, um, uh, uh, the at Sydney. So that's the, uh, that's the thatch on the cricket pavilion. In terms of the values of the, of the awards, I won't spend too long on that. It follows a very similar profile. Um, to the um, number of awards, um, except you can see that um, 2014 was a bumper year. By and large, that period of 2010 to 2014 was about £100,000 a year of awards that were that were um, that were that, that were that were made by the uh, by the fund. There were a lot of fairly large projects um, which uh, went took forth in 2014, which why is why that was such a peak year. Um, and again, if you look in the in the period 2015 through, through to 2019, you can see that the absolute value of the award levels is, tail is tailed off and tails off significantly during the COVID years of 2020 and 21. Now, it is true that in those early years, you know, of the up, up, up until 2014, the general investment returns that were that were um, that were that were made on the market from, could be made from the market were higher than in the light in the later years so there's a there's, li there's a little bit of an impl implication in, impact there as well but by and large that's the profile of the awards that have been made over the over the 13 years of the fund that the total of those bar graphs adds up to the 995,000 pounds that the, the fund has made to external organizations when you add in the support given to sva projects the total amount um, comes comfortably in you know, over one million. So just wanted to talk a little bit about the type of organizations that the Keith Owen Fund has been able to support over the last um, over the last 13 years. Quite a I chose this picture of the the two gigs on Sidmouth Beach. A, I think it's a very beautiful picture, but I think it's also quite iconic as well. For the Keith Owen uh, naming of the of the Keith Owen gig, and uh, which was the first of the two that the fund was able to give some funding support support towards. When you start to look at the num the, the 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 types of projects and organisations that, that that the fund has been able to support over over the last thirteen years, then the list is actually pretty extensive. Um, um, I'm not expecting you to be able to read all of the names on that list, but just looking at the number of organisations and within the Sid Vale that have been able to be supported in some way by the fund over the year, I think it's quite remarkable that such a wide range of societies, clubs and organisations um, could be supported, and quite frankly, actually exist to be supported, in the population in the Sid Vale of about 15 and a half thousand people. So that's just a, a, an overview of the names of each and every organization or club or society that received some benefit from the Keith Owen Fund over the last 13 years. So I took those awards and I, I, I tried to try to put them into categories to, to, um, to try to give an indication of the breadth of support if you like that the Keith Owen Fund has been able to give and I, I mean these, these are my choices by the way I chose heritage nature clubs and societies community youth arts and festivals um, you know examples of a heritage would be the um, the, 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 the refurbishment of the Victoria window in the Sidmouth Parish Church um, the Delderfield Memorial which sits just above um, 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 name, forgot the name of the steps, you know, the, near Connaught Gardens, and the Armed Service Tribute, which sits near Blackmore Gardens. Um, examples of nature would be support to the Arboretum Society, the Horticultural Society, support towards the Friends of the Buys, and also um, some support for the production, for the for the for making and producing wild wildflower meadows. Um, Kinds of societies that we've that's been able to be supported by the fund include things like the Gig Club, Sidmouth Taekwondo, 
um, the netball club, the rugby club, the cricket club, model railway club, and the pan Pentank, Pentank Club. I mean, they're, they're just an example of some of the ones that have been supported. Community, that would involve things like Sidmouth in Bloom, the Sidmouth Coastal Community Hub. Some, quite a lot of support was given in the, in the mid years to, to the Hopper Bus, which runs during the summer season to set that up and get it going. Um, but even smaller awards to the Limebourne, Limebourne and Arcot Park Residence Association and Social Club who did some work working, trying to improve their area by planting and, and constructing gardens. Examples of youth that I, I, I picked out would be things like the Sidmouth Surf Lifesaving Club, Sidmouth Plastic Warriors, quite some um, 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 awards made towards the Girl Guides, the refurbishment of the Scout Hook, uh, the Army Cadet Force, and we also did quite put some quite some awards uh, in towards um, help and regeneration of the play areas. And um, that includes the ham, but also the ham play area, but other play areas uh, around the Sid Vale as well. I was quite surprised that the arts side of it was featured so, so re relatively small, it, uh, small in this overall picture. Um, but there has been some support given to production of some radio plays, Johnny Jack's War, to the De Devon's Performance, Performing Arts Society and towards the Literary Festival as well. So some support of the arts has been given, but it's, it, as you see, it is featuring relatively um, on the low side of the, uh, of the list, you know, which I certainly selected. And then the festivals that have been supported over the year have been the, over the years have been the folk festival, science festival, sea fest, and the walking festival. Um, I'll talk a little bit about our general approach towards making awards a bit later on. But generally, what we tend to like to do is to support support activities when they are um, being set up. Um, I would like to call that more like pump priming. Um, and then those organisations get on their feet, and then can they can they can they can you know have their own sustainable sustained way of sustaining themselves. Or we support specific projects. Um, so, so over the last few years, for instance, because the folk festivals are established, we haven't given very many grants over the last over the years that I've been a, mem a member of the grant committee towards the festivals because they by and large, you know, have been established. And you know, got their operation operating, run and maintain um, basis well in place. Finally, I thought it was quite interesting to actually look across the, all the total of the awards. So this is the the over all of the two hundred and eighteen awards over the thirteen year years, and see what average value of awards have been made. And again, I found it quite interesting to see that actually 70% of the awards made over the last 13 years are, are less than £5,000. Um, if you take the £995,000 that's been made in awards and divide that by the 218 awards and 218 awards made, um, then you come to an average award value of about £4,500 over the, over, the, over the period of the fund. Um, only four awards were made for any application greater than £20,000. So you can see, by and large, the fund has been helping a diverse and wide range of, um, of activities and, and organisations and, and societies. Um, generally speaking, well, almost without exception, um, we, the fund does not fully fund an application. So we, 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 we like to look for applications where the organization has been, has been seeking, other, seeking other means of funding, either, either through other grant applications to other, other, other grant awarding bodies, you know, or through their own fundraising activities. And we generally, we generally work on the principle of, of, of match funding. In other words, if we make an award of 5,000 pounds, then we'd expect the organisation seeking the award to, to, be, to be raising £5,000 themselves towards a total project cost of £10,000. 
often it's far less than match funding is what we're asked to asked to award and in fact do award. So if you actually um, um, take you know take a bit little bit of license and then do and then say well we, if if we're match funding everything, then this actually means that the Keith Owen Fund has helped well over two million pounds worth of projects to be delivered across the Sid Valley during the 13 years that it's been in existence. And as I say earlier, I mentioned earlier, um, we do have a preference towards either a project, a, a defined specific project to be delivered or pump, prime, pump, prime, pump priming a new initiative um, during the startup phase whilst it gets on its feet and can, and can you know, run itself in the future. We tend not to um, fund what I, I would categorize as being run and maintain type activities. This is a little bit of experiment now. Um, I was recently at the SVA 175 exhibition, um, which was held in the basement of Kenaway House. Um, on the Keith Owen fund stand there. And one of the visitors asked me, um, what effect has the Keith, ha Keith Owen fund had on the Sid Vale over the years it's been in existence? Um, I, thought I, I, I thought that was quite an interesting question actually and, and, uh, and um, pondered it on a while. And I certainly came to the conclusion that it hadn't supported a lot of big initiatives. I mean, you know, for a million pounds you might, be able to build two or three houses or something like that. Well, the Keith Owen Fund hasn't done that, nor put any um, um, you know, huge vanity project somewhere within the, within the confines of the Sid Valley. So the answer I gave was that my view was that, 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 the, that the Keith Owen Fund was a little bit like a sprinkling of stardust over the Sid Vale, um, in that it's, it had supported a lot of discrete activities rather than a few big activities. So I went away and I thought, well, Alan, if, you, if that's what you've said, you better just check whether it's true or not. Um, so this is my representation of what a, a sprinkling of stardust over the Sid Vale from the Keith Owen Fund may look like. So what I've done there, I hope it's come through all right, is I actually took those, of those projects that I could identify with a particular place in the Sid Valley and mark the spot where they are. And, and I, I hope what you can see, obviously it, it's following the main tracks and where main organizations are based rather than the, where, the, where populate, population houses are. But I hope you can see the scattering across, you know, the, all of the Sid Valley, not just Sidmouth, but up into Sidford, Sidbury, across towards Sulcum Regis, um, various places, uh, you know, around the Sid Valley have all benefited from what I would call my sprinkling of stardust of the Keith, well not my, the sprinkling of stardust of the Keith Owen Fund over the last 13 years. And then we come on to the plaques. So um, I mentioned earlier, one of the things that the Keith Owen Fund has, 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 has does is where it's appropriate, agree with the award holder, to actually place a plaque uh, recognizing the, the activity that's been supported and the, and the, and the support of the Keith Owen Fund towards that. You probably have noticed the, uh, the green woodpecker uh, widely seen around the Sid Valley. Um, I, when, I start, when I first um, uh, joined, the, joined the, the, the grant committee, I took it on myself to try and photograph every Keith Owen Fund I stumbled across. Uh, like I stumbled across them, and, I, and I looked at my photos library, I've got 25 of them in there, but I'm sure that's not all of them. Um, I think plaques are a little bit like Marmite, you either look, love them and hate them, and, and that's whether you like plaques or not, uh, as, as, a, you know, as a worthy tribute or just some clutter. And also we found it's also the same with the green woodpecker. I think the green woodpeckers either, love, either loved or hated, it's a bit of a... So it's a double marmite, I think that's it. Um, nevertheless, in um, 2019, we did take a, a view that we would change the representation of the plaques and we'd move more, if you like, into, in, into, into line with, with overall SVA livery. So on the right-hand side is the format of the new club, new plaques, 
which you can see in about five or six places we've got them um, um, displayed. Um, one, as you can see, at the Cricket, Tennis and Croquet Club, and actually the most recent one, which was put up at Sidmouth Town Football Club. We don't put plaques up with every award. We, we, we look at, at whether or not it would seem appropriate, whether or not the, the award holder is comfortable to have a, have a plaque displayed, and whether or not it's, it's, it's in a place that's gonna, gonna frankly be seen by sufficient people to be, to be worth, worth doing. But we do consider every award that we make as to whether or not we wish to discuss with the award holder if they'd be happy to, to have, a, have a plaque there. So I'm going to look a little bit to the future now, and I want to bring us back to those two slides that we looked at very much at the beginning, which were the number of awards per year, um, by, and then the total value of awards per year. Um, if you've been looking at the COVID um, stats at all over the last 18 months, you'll have noticed that in order to smooth out irregularity, they use what they call a moving average um, trend line. So on this, on these graphs, I've plotted what I would call the two-year moving average trend line. Um, that's the light blue. That's the light blue line, which starts just below the 13, goes up to the 27, and then move, then moves down. And I think that the trend um, is pretty clear to see. Um, the 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 COVID years is obviously affecting it quite a, quite significantly. But there was there is a downward pull on that trend line even before COVID was coming in, and I think this is one of the things that uh, when I come to looking to the future and how we emerge from a COVID world, that, uh, that I think we need to be considering the profile that we've been seeing in terms of awards over, over the period of, a period of time that the fund has been in existence. So when I'm, when I'm looking to the future um, and moving beyond COVID, um, um, I think these are the things that are in, that are in my mind. Um, I, th I think that we, re we reopened the fund you know, on the 1st of January this, this, this year, but I don't think organisations restarted at that same pace. In fact, I think many organisations I found that they needed to cautiously restart from the from the lockdown period um, of COVID, both in terms of, of, of safety, but being able to do so safely, uh, but also their volunteers' willingness to be part of, to to participate. So we need to adjust to a new new norm as organisations do restart after COVID, um, and, and we're beginning to see that in terms of interest in application to the fund, but we'll need to be cognizant of that as we go, aware of that as we go into 2022. I think we need to do something to, um, to revitalise awareness of the fund. What do I mean by that? Quite a lot of people have said to me that, 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 that this, this period of time that we've all endured during COVID has almost been like a lost period. Um, and so I, I think that we need, that, that there is, that there may be a need, or will be a need, to actually make sure people and communities are aware that the Keith Owen Fund exists and it is, it, is, it is open and welcome to receive applications. We, are, we have entered a period of generally lower investment returns um, from, um, from, from the investments made. Um, that's just, a, that's just a, a, you know, a fact, I mean, uh, in terms of where we are in terms of the investment cycle. And in terms of, I think the, um, the hit on the markets that COVID had as well. So, so by and large, the the level of investment returns that we could in, expect in the in the early part, well, two, 2008 through to 2014, is not as high as what we can expect in 2021, 2022, and we'll need to manage that, you know, with the um, awards that we're able to make. That's not to say that we um, haven't got, a, you know, a uh, uh, you know, a very significant amount of money to make awards towards organisations you know, in, the, in this year and the coming year, just that we need to be aware of, of, of the, what the limits may be. I think, we, I think 
even though I showed in the earlier slide that long list of organizations that have benefited from the fund over the year, there may still be organizations within the Sid Valley either existing or setting up who may be unaware of the fund. So we need to find a way to reach out to them. And equally, I think we need to, what I would call, make sure organizations who are received awards in the past um, may, may wish to consider making applications in the future if they've got new projects or activities that they, that they wish to consider uh, an award application against. And also accepting, you know, there will be ebbs and flows. When we looked at the earlier graph in terms of the awards by year, I, I pointed out the very high level awards that were made in the particular year of 2014. I think not every year will be the same. Not every year will have big projects. Some years may have big projects. And we'll just need to manage the ebbs and flows within the fund as we go through the coming year, coming year, year and years. And finally, um, when I discussed this presentation with my son, he said, hey, remember, Dad, most people forget all but three things of a presentation 60 minutes after it, had been, after it had finished. And so I thought I would put on this slide, finally, what my three takeaways are. So these are the three things I hope that I've been able to... Um, Put, to, you know, put over over the last half an hour or so, but these are the three things that, that I think about um, the Keith Owen Fund. Firstly, it, it does have a proud history. Um, I believe it has been simply and diligently managed over the past 13 years. I hope I've shown that. I also hope I've shown that the fund is on a sound footing for the future. Secondly, um, I hope I've been able to show that it is, the fund has been like a sprinkling of stardust across the Sid Vale. I think it's touched many parts of our community in many ways. And I think that's something that we in the Sid Vale Association should be proud of. And thirdly, we do need to move beyond COVID, not totally beyond COVID, of course, but beyond the, the, the lockdown restrictions of COVID. We need to reach out to new opportunities. So, I would ask you all as, as SVA ambassadors, what, you know, when you meet people and you come across things and you see people who you believe may be prospective applicants for awards to the funds, please encourage them to visit the website where there's a full in, uh, application details. Um, it's very easy to get to, just go to the Sid Bell Association website, go to the Keith Owen Fund, and within there, there's a tab which calls how to apply. And on that tab, there are, they're copied, downloadable copies of the application form and also download, downloadable copies of the um, guidance for applicants. So please, if you do come across people and you're, you know, as you're out and about talking with people and, you, and they've got an idea you think might qualify for the Keith Owen Fund, point them in that direction if you're able to. Actually, of course, leave the iconic picture in only because I think it's a lovely picture. Uh, this was one of the Think Big, Think Out of the Box projects of the Keith Owen Fund. And as you probably know, there were well, over 600,000 bulls planted, um, all by volunteers, young and old. And I'm pretty sure by now there's over a million of them, of them out there. That's all I wanted to say about it. I hope it's been helpful and interesting um, and that uh, you gained something from, uh, from the last half an hour or so.